All right, so welcome to part three of how I re-leather wrestling belts. Um, this one we're going to be looking at, at dyeing the leather. Okay, it's a pretty simple um, process. Dyeing is actually pretty easy. So once you've got it all beveled and everything's the way you want it to be, and I should mention here that once you've dyed it, you really can't do a whole lot of beveling and altering. It is what it is. Um, so this is the dye I use. I normally use what's called USMC Black. This is pro dye. This is alcohol based. The other one I think is oil based. They didn't have any USMC black, but any non water based um, black dye will work. Uh, that's Fiblings. There are also there's another one Eco something or other. Anything at Tandy, they can recommend something good, right? And this is what I use to apply it. As you can see, I've already used it for this specific for a test piece, so it's already black. These are wool daubers. You can get them at any craft store for next to nothing. So uh, what I normally start with. Because I'll pull it right up to the edge of my workbench here. Okay, and I will normally start with the edge. Okay, so we have no backing on this yet. It's still got the leather backing. And I will do a little bit of the back and the outside edge. Okay, and that's how I start and then I do the surface. The reason for that is because once you put the backing on, on the off chance, you've got a little bit of the showing or something like that. You don't want the leather color coming through. Okay, so I put a little bit of dye on the back. So I'm going to do the edges, and then we'll do the um, the face of the leather. Okay. Alrighty, so we've got our edge done here, uh, a little bit on the back side. Okay, and now uh, the reason I do that first, like I said, is uh, just because once you've dyed the top, it's kind of hard to manipulate and, and do the edge. So do the edge first, then do the the whole thing. Apply it liberally. No matter which kind of dye you're using, you can always buff it and wipe it off uh, later. One thing I should mention, I am using this wool dauber uh, to apply the dye, okay? Um, this black, in my experience, is the only color that you can use to actually apply the, uh, the dye, the, with, use a wool dauber with, okay? When you use other kinds of dye, or God forbid paint, um, you have to use different methods, okay? I, I have a, a, an air compressor over in the corner there, and I have a spray gun for the air compressor, okay? And basically, um, with, um, with dye, you need to buy special stuff to dilute it. So if you're doing, I did a while ago, some of you saw a purple oval intercontinental strap that I did, okay? So for that one, um, I um, I loaded the dye into uh, the air sprayer, like an air gun, and diluted it with um, with stuff I bought specifically from Fiblings to dilute the dye. Long story short, a colored strap is a lot harder, uh, especially with paint. Oh my God, paint is, I've done one of those another one coming up they're hard so you're gonna see streaks on the first coat just like you would if you're painting your house okay don't worry about those they'll go away you can fix that later okay so you're just kind of doing this around the whole belt um, and in between coats you're gonna buff the snot out of it so you get yourself a good soft clean rag with no debris on it and you're gonna buff the snot out of it after it's dry so I usually let it dry for I don't know a few hours depending on the weather and then um, and then I will uh, Buff the snot of it and put another coat on. And usually two coats of dye will do it. You might have to put a third, but uh, yeah. So dyeing is the simple part. And then the next part of the, this video, we'll look at how to top coat it. You have to put something on the top to protect it and to give it that nice shiny sheen thing that you see on the belts. Okay? Okay, so we've um, dyed our belt. This is what it looks like. I buffed it between coats with a microfiber cloth, clean one. Uh, got our holes punched. Like I said, once you've got a dye, you notice every little imperfection. So little notches, like that little thing there. Or if any of your lines aren't straight. There's a little, see that there? You can always tap it with a beveler, but don't do too much. Because you'll dink it up completely. Okay, so the last stage is going to be the top coat. This is pretty much essential. It protects the leather, and it makes it shiny. Now, you, there's a bunch of different stuff you can use. This stuff, for me, is the best. It's odorless. Some of the stuff out there is really harmful. There's another one I use in a spray can, an aerosol. It's pretty much death in a container. Uh, but this is better. Great for black. EcoFlow Super Sheen. You can get it from Tandy Leather. How you apply it. Sponge. Damp. Okay, not soaking wet, just lightly damp. You put it on here, and then you put it on here in broad strokes. Okay, so I'll do that in just a minute. Alrighty, so start at one end. I got a little bit on there. Oh, yeah, I have some debris on the thing. In the container, shit. Okay, and you swipe. It's gonna come off bubbly. Don't worry about it. That will dry. You won't even see it. 
hopefully. <laughs> no, it doesn't. So nice long strokes, okay? You do two coats or three of this for the whole belt. I'm going to put the camera down because I'm fucking this up, but you get the idea. So like I said, your first coat looks like this. There will be uh, some strokes on it that you will see. Don't worry about that. With Super Sheen, once it dries, you won't see any of it. You might have to put two coats on, but you won't see any of it. So that's just the first coat. I'll do like for that to dry, and I'll do it again. Alright, so this is what our strap looks like once it is dyed and top coated and tooled and all that stuff. The back is not done yet. So we're all leather. So the next step is putting our snaps in. So for a typical replica, you want to use <coughs> line 24 snaps. Now this is a spinner. So I'm using screen accurate, as far as I know, silver snaps. Now there's male and there's female. Now the male you put on before you put the backing on. Okay, so we're going to do those now. The female you put on after the backing goes on. The male are these little buggers here. Okay, and the backings are that one there. Okay, so what you do, you take... God, I hate doing this. I can do it with a fucking iPad and I hate these things. So, it goes through the back side, the little post through the hole. Alrighty, so you got a little post coming up there. And you take this. And you plop her on there. Okay, and you see how that's coming up through? Now, there's a few different ways of doing this. Uh, the real pro guys have like a great big, like a press thing that comes down with a big handle. I am not a pro guy. I use the old fashioned method. This is a little tool you can get from Candy Leather. It's a snap setter for line 20 snaps. Basically, you take it, you put it in there, and you smash the bejesus out of it, not too hard, with this. Okay? Right, uh, so you, you hit it, give it a good, give, give it a good pop with that in the middle, and then I usually tap it around the edges like that just to seal it. Now, what you'll notice is see that little lip in there that stems up. That'll basically fold itself over, so this is in place for and ever, forever and ever. Amen. You'll only get that out with, by cutting it. Okay, so I'm gonna do all these. This is a uh, Jmar snap, so there's eight by eight on this side, and they're all the male. So I'll do those, and then we'll look at, uh, I guess, the next step. Right, so we got our male snaps in on this side. Okay, next step is my favorite part. Next step is the plate. So we're gonna flip this bugger around here. And the next step is attaching the plate to the strap itself so you'll get a kind of a, more of an idea of what this thing's gonna look like when it's done. So we'll attach the plates. And there it is. Now you get an idea of how it's gonna look. This is the most ridiculous belt in the world, isn't it? Anyway, now these plates I restone myself, by the way, because <laughs> I'm an idiot. Uh, so anyway, now you get your plates on your strap, okay? And these ones, these uh, snaps, we're going to leave for a little while. Now, the next stage is putting your backing on. Now, um, okay, so before I get to that, to put the backing on, obviously you get those are... Uh, male snaps down there. You know, gonna go there on the other side. Put your backing on. I'm gonna flip her around. Sorry for the shitty nature of my workshop, but it's a workshop. So on the back here, um, if it's a figs replica, you're gonna have your screws exposed like this. Don't worry about it. When you put leather on the back, you won't see those at all. With a bootleg. So if you're buying a boot, you're gonna have a bolt sticking up through with a nut on it and usually a washer on it. Now, when I do that, basically I will put the nut on with a little it looks like this. You get the socket wrench set and tighten it and I use Loctite. It's something that fuses the bolt permanently together so it will not come out. Now that being said you can't have giant bolts hanging out the back of your belt. Otherwise it'll look horrible and the back won't stick properly. So you get yourself a... sorry. Get yourself something. There's a little mandrel that comes with it. Apparently mine's missing. Cutting wheel. Looks like this. You can get uh, for, I think it's like 20 bucks, you get a five pack. And basically it's a super high speed 
a metal cutting wheel. You don't do this with the screws. Don't ever do this with the screws. These are fine. You can just put a backing on. But if you have a boot and you're going to put a boot like belt and you're going to put bolts on just like the real belts, you want to cut them off. So you cut the bolt off and then you grind it down with this so it kind of is like a little stump instead of a giant bolt sticking through. Do not use a cutting wheel with these screws. So the next step is to put on our backing. So our backing is a, um, uh, okay, so there's a few different schools of thought on the subject. This is what I use. This is, I believe, genuine cowhide, and it's very thin. See how thin that is? Like thinner than a piece of paper, okay? And uh, there's a few different options. I always use real leather. I never cheap out. I know that, uh, I've, he I've heard that Jamar uses um, vinyl, like synthetic leather backing. I've heard other guys use synthetic leather. I don't. Um, in my mind, if you're going to blow all that money on the strap and do all that time and effort, why would you put synthetic on the back? I tried it. It never, it never seems to work for me. Maybe somebody else can help me with that. It always winds up, uh, it never attaches right, never glues right, never flexes right. This is real leather. It will always flex just like real leather because that's what it is. So this is our backing. Uh, now, this is cowhide. You can use, there are several different kinds you can use. I've tried pig hide before. Pig hide is cheaper. If you go to a, a Tandy store or any leather store, pig hide you'll get for much cheaper. And you can get a piece that's big enough to do a whole back. But the problem is it's got little perforations, little holes in it. It's also really rigid. So if you put pig hide on the back of this, it'll never bend and flex like the ones you see on TV, which always drives me nuts. So I use cowhide. Ironically enough, funny thing, you would think this is the expensive part. In Canada, anyway, I don't know how it works for you guys down there in the States. This, the backing, is actually uh, just as, if not more expensive, depending on when and where you buy it, than the front. This is actually, it costs a freaking fortune, uh, the backing, but you got to do it right. So um, Now, what I've done, these come in much larger pieces. Like, I bought ones that were the size of half a whole cow, so gigantic. I've cut this piece out and measured it to size for the backing on this belt. Now, you'll notice it's bigger than the belt. Okay, all the way around, bigger. So what you do is you glue it to the belt as it sits. Okay, don't cut it first. I've done that before, it was a monumental mistake. Leave it as it is. Okay, you cut it after you actually glue it. And what do you use to glue it? <clears throat> don't go to your local hardware store and buy glue. I don't care if it says it's flexible. I don't care if you think super glue is great. This is what you need. It's upside down because it's I've used it. Tanner's contact cement. In Canada, this is about 25 bucks a bottle. So in the States, that equates to with the exchange four bucks. No, I'm kidding. Uh, it, it's it's less, a lot less, because you Americans have it made when it comes to leather stuff anyway. So this is what I use, the brush in the can. And basically what you do, what I do anyway, I start uh, typically in the middle, especially with the spinner. So I'll do a coat on one side, do a coat on the other side, let it dry for a few seconds, then press them together. Okay? And then you move all the way along. I do it in stages. I don't do it all at once. So I'll do this section, then I'll do this section, then I'll do this section. And what you wind up with is uh, this is glued down to that all the way along. Make sure you work out all your bubbles, all your kinks beforehand so that you don't have that at the end. Because once this stuff sets, this shit is permanent. It is hard getting that up again. You'll destroy the belt. So make sure that it's stuck and it's stuck good. And it's uh, and make sure that it's, uh, it's, it's, it's you know, evened out. The other thing, what I typically do, see this blanket here, this old shitty blanket. I, I will fold the blanket up and over on top of the belt. Okay. And then I will put tons of weight on top. Sometimes I'll put a board and then tons of weight, like all those screw containers up there. And then this gigantic tool container down here and anything else I can find on top, leave it overnight. Okay. The more weight evenly distributed that you leave on it, the longer uh, it will stick to the back. Okay. The better the bond will be, uh, the, the longer you leave it to set. Okay. So that's kind of the uh, long and the short of putting the backing on. Right, so I'm going to do that and uh, leave it overnight. And next step, we'll get to trimming the uh, the edges off because I guess you get a lot of excess here. Okay. Okay, so our belt's under here. One thing I forgot to mention before you 
put the weight on top. I'm, I have a whole, I put a whole bunch of, I'm a teacher, so I have, I like closets full of old lessons on paper. So I just put a layer of paper underneath the stuff. If you put heavy stuff right on top of the leather, you'll damage it. So this is just to sort of more evenly distribute the weight. It's especially helpful if you have, as most of them, the center plate's curved. On a spinner, it's not, but uh, most of them, the center plate, it's curved. Uh, so if you put paper in there, kind of evens things out a little bit. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take all this crap off here and the paper and everything. We'll have a look at the backing. Uh, we'll flip it over and we'll cut using a hobby knife around the edges. So once you pull it up, you're gonna look at, uh, it's gonna look something like this. Like I said, it'll uh, way overhang the ends of the, the belt, that's fine. So you get, it's, now I use, because you have to put it face down, I use a blanket, and I use the same blanket for everyone. You're going to ruin it, but uh, the blanket, I mean. It's glued to the blanket. It always is. So basically, you have to just peel it up, okay, and then flip around. And peeled up, flipped around, this is what you get. Now, obviously, backing's way too big, so you have to trim it. Now, I use the sharpest possible hobby knife. Now, um, basically what I do is I will pull at this and run the hobby knife down along. So you have to follow the edge of the belt. Okay. So what you don't want is you don't want to tilt it out this way and you don't want to tilt it in this way. It has to be perfectly straight and follow the edge of the belt. Okay. Now I'm not going to do that on video because trying to hold the camera and do that at the same time, I will certainly fuck it up. So uh, bear with me. I'll, I'll put it on pause. But basically, you, like I said, you got to go straight and follow the edge of the belt. Do it belt face up. That way you can follow your own edge and the contour of the belt itself. Okay, so now that we've got the backing trimmed off, um, there's a couple steps left and then we'll be done the belt. The next step is using your hole punch that you use to do these holes. Remember? Same one. you got to come over here. Now the female snaps go through the backing. Okay, now you'll see we've glued the backing on. So what we have to do is punch these holes again and then attach the snap. So what I'm going to do is use the use my hammer, punch all these holes again through the backing so that I have a hole right through the belt, and then I'll flip it over and show you how I'm going to attach the snaps. Okay, so now that I've poked my holes right through, okay, I got the belt on its face, and we're going to set our female snaps. Female snaps are a little different now. So basically, it's the same idea in the sense that you take the thing, the little plug, I guess, or whatever, and you poke it through the hole you punched. Comes out the back, okay. A little bit sticks up and then you take this piece here goes over it okay and you give it a whack with the hammer and with your setting tool same setting tool as before now the difference here this little anvil okay like if you're American I think it costs like a dollar or something you have to put it underneath the other side so that your female snap rests on it okay like that you have to do this on a solid surface too but um, so your female snap rests on it. If you don't do that, you will dent it. So you'll have, basically, you'll have a snap that's attached here, really hard to remove, and it's dented. Okay, so you have to put this, use the anvil. The first belt I did, I think maybe two, I did without this, because the guy didn't tell me I needed it. What a freaking nightmare. For a dollar, honestly, it's worth it. So basically, you put this underneath here, it'll go under there, I can't really do it while I'm holding the camera, and then you use your snap setting tool to do the same thing. You have It's a little harder to get through because we're doing two layers now, because we have the backing on so you have to push down and really give it a good whack okay and then when you're done i have a little piece here that i use from from forever ago these are male snaps and basically i snap them in and out of each one to make sure that these don't come off because these things are notorious for coming off when you're doing it by hand if you have the big 200 hundred dollar expensive thing it never comes off but i'm doing it by hand i'm doing it with a hammer so i use this thing after i've set all these snaps again you'll have the same idea this little lip here will curl curl over and then you know it's secure. So I go over with this, okay, once I've got them all in, just to make sure that they're gonna stay. And then we move on to our last step, which is the edging. So I'm gonna put these in and then I'll go over the, the edging and then our belt's pretty much done. So, I mean, if you're new to this and you don't really care so much, we could say our project is done. We got our female snaps on, male snaps, backing, backing is nice and straight. But, um, so I, I do one more step. Most professional releathers will do one more step, and it's a pain in the ass, but it's, it's necessary, I think. Edge coat and edge burnishing, okay? So basically, you've got two layers of leather here that you can see there's a seam, right? Um, so 
There's a few different options. What you want to do is you want to burnish these edges so that they are, uh, it's almost like a plastic ring goes around it. It's hard to explain. But basically, I use this. This is my, my go-to. And you basically put this on this edge and rub it back and forth, like we, just like we did before when it was raw leather. And you just keep going all the way around for hours and hours and hours. Your arm will get sore. Just keep going. Some guys use this. Uh, this is beeswax. You can get it at a, any leather work store. And it basically just makes the edges slick and smooth. You only need a little bit of this, and it'll actually stick to your wheel and go all the way around. Um, I've, I've used this in the past. I like it. I know some other guys don't like it. And uh, you can use this. So basically with this one, this is the same idea. You got a bunch of notches. And then on the other side, you can do this to actually mat that down so it'll fit inside of one of your grooves, depending on how thick your leather is. Once you've done that, okay, so once you've got, I'm not going to do that right now because it'll just be pointless for hours. Go all the way around the belt. You're going to have a nice smooth edge. You may still see a seam. You apply this stuff. This is called edge coat. Again, it can be purchased from Tandy. Uh, and you use it with, uh, you start with a stick and then you apply it with a paintbrush on the edge of the belt. So what I do is I'll prop the belt up on its, on its face so it's like a, like a circle. Do the top, let it dry, do the bottom. Flip it over and do the bottom, okay? And what you wind up with is a plastic-like edge. Now, some of the guys I've seen on the, the belt pages, I mean, they're phenomenal at this. I'm not as good at it. I'm still working at it. It's, it's a, I can't give you one piece of advice that's going to give you perfectly flawless edges. Maybe they can. But uh, uh, anyway, so, th so that's the last step is burnishing the edges. And again, and so all of the stuff that I've said here, this is just what I do, right? And I know I'm not right on all of it. Any of you want to give me advice? Go for it. I'm always, I'm all ears, right? Um, but for those of you who are just starting to re-leather, you can do any of these steps, all of these steps, none of these steps, whatever you want. When I first started re-leathering, some of these steps I didn't do because I didn't know them, right? And uh, it just takes time, takes lots of practice, especially with the beveling. I still don't have it down. I'm getting there, but I'm not exactly where I want to be yet. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's how to re-leather a belt. Hopefully you guys found it useful. And as you can see, I've re-stoned this one. I think I might do a review of this one later, or just like a video kind of thing and post it. God, what an ugly belt, isn't it? I bought it because it's the only hole in my collection. Pain in the ass re-stoning it, though. 3,000 stones. My hat's off to you, three stone guys, I'll tell you that much. Anyway, yeah, so that is part three of how I re-leather um, a replica belt. Thanks for watching.